Hello everyone, this is Ray Space, and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12, where I'm continuing to test my Mars Star Mars Lander, and in this video, not to particularly great success. Now, just a reminder, I had previously introduced this Mars Star. It has a nice cargo bay and everything, and it also has landing engines at the bottom and doors for those landing engines. All that is built in. But all that also causes a whole lot of additional problems, as well as its interesting shape. It can fly around Earth, given enough thrust, enough of a boost, but uh, it the atmosphere of Mars is a little bit thin. Here I'm fitting an ISRU unit because one thing that will help is if we underfuel it in order to land on Mars, instead of bringing down its full fuel load, expecting it to get back to orbit with that load again. So we're going to underfuel it and then have it drill for fuel on the surface so that it doesn't have to be so heavy coming down. There are the drills, and that will save us a lot of trouble. I tried to bring it down fully fueled, but it just wasn't slowing down enough. The problem is that Mars's atmosphere is super thin, 1% that of Earth's, and it doesn't want to slow us down, so we end up smacking into the ground really fast. Some ways to mitigate that are parachutes and using the engines, but we don't want to slow down the full 3,000 meters per second initially. So here we are trying to use the engines to slow down to allow the parachutes to come out. The parachutes will diminish the speed by a few hundred meters per second and then we can continue using the engines to do the final bit of landing. The problem is, well, I was tweaking the COM a little bit. The COM offset that I have there uh, moves the COM by one meter. And that's because there is a set of auxiliary tanks in the back that we can pump fuel into. They're sort of like the SpaceX header tanks. And so we can move the COM, but where to move the COM is sort of an interesting question. Uh, the place that the engines want the COM is different from the place that the aerodynamics want the COM. <laughs> so that's our problem. Uh, might need to fix that. Oh, so if we're not already tilted straight up, when the parachutes come out, they do this thing, right? Because we're at an angle, the parachutes sort of jerk the whole thing up, and then it goes imbalanced because it basically stalls. And the parachutes don't have enough strength to actually hold it in a particular orientation at this point because they're not fully deployed yet. These are the drogue chutes. They come out initially at 8 kilometers and then they fully deploy at 5 kilometers. Then the main chutes pop out initially at 3.2 kilometers and fully deploy at 1.6 kilometers. So here we have the full deployment of the drogue chutes, but it's still rocking around all over the place. Note that all four are out. All four are out fully. This is going to become important and this is why I've been having trouble. Uh, aside from the imbalance thing. Now the main chutes come out at 3.2 kilometers as expected. They do slow us down very well. I mean, we're, we're nice and slow. The problem is they snap. <laughs> and it's only the back ones that snap. Now, because the back ones snap, the rest of the parachutes are pulling us in a way that prevents the engines from actually doing anything. Uh, the engine plumes also need to be fixed, apparently. But yeah, this is not going to work out for us, though it's going to create a spectacular impact on the surface. Here we go. The game is deciding exactly what kind of carnage to wreak upon the Mars star. And this is mainly what this video is all about. The interesting impacts of the Mars star on the Mars surface. In this case, it's full perishment, if you will. <laughs> full destruction. So, I double checked the parachutes to see that they have the right numbers. They do, so I changed the pre-deployment and deployment speed, but they were deployed. So there's no reason for them to snap. I don't know what is causing them to snap after they are deployed and after it's slowed down. Normally they snap if they're not deployed. So it's some aerodynamic forces is far doing something with real shoots. Now, to solve the whole business of it flopping all over the place, I try to have it come in like this, like a pod, but it really can't hold this for very long. Eventually, the aerodynamics make force it to be an airplane instead. And part of the reason is because the rudders are not exposed to the airflow. That's no good. 
they're not able to hold yaw at all because they're off the side. I mean, they're on the top and uh, RCS has to do everything. The RCS is not powerful enough for that. So it turns into an airplane. But that's sort of to be expected. Maybe for the drogue shoots, if I increase the deployment speed, it'll be more gentle and won't jerk it like it did. Well, here we're uh, coming in a little bit fast prior to the parachute deployment, so I use the engines to try and slow down a bit so that it's safer. You can see the little trap doors for the engines, the engine flaps. There we are, 12 engines total, each with 108 kN, 460 seconds of ISP. So basically RL-10-ish, but with a smaller nozzle and stage combustion so that they can fit in a smaller space. Otherwise, with the RL-10 nozzles, they're not going to fit like this. Because of the Mars Star's angle, the burn boosts us up instead of just slow us down, slows us down. And so we hop a little bit, we have a higher vertical speed, we go up and then we go back down, but that's good for parachute deployment. And they hold until they decide, again, not to hold. Yep, it's gonna happen again. So, that is the issue. I don't know why, maybe I have to turn something off with FAR, tell it not to hurt the parachutes or something. We're rolling all over the place here. And then the main chutes come out. Now, main chute full deployment is 1.6 kilometers. Put gear down. They snap before the main chute deployment is supposed to happen. So, and it's the drogue chutes and all the main chutes this time snapping. Only two drogues remain. On the bright side, the collision with the surface ends up being a lot fancier. <laughs> uh, we're going to have an interesting time here. Start spinning like this, this is key. All this testing was during a Twitch live stream, so my live stream audience got to see all the tedious portions of everything. Uh, but during all of this, somebody decided to follow, so the follow audio played, and so I have to mute that because it's a uh, clip from Star Trek 2 Wrath of Khan and so just in case to be safe it's it's probably not a big deal because it's not a long enough clip to irritate anybody but just in case I've muted that a little bit as we continue to roll around now apparently with one parachute constantly keeping us like this and we've got one vertical stabilizer left Bouncing up. This is severe litho breaking, folks. This is the ultimate in litho breaking. We could have a litho breaking championship uh, defined by how long the thing keeps moving <laughs> in time, or maybe distance. Distance from first impact. You are not allowed to control it though. That's the thing. It's litho breaking out of control. Yeah, the user has to set up the conditions but then not touch it. Okay. Well, we seem to be settling down now. The RCS bits don't have colliders, you can see they clip into the ground. And the RCS bits in the tail. Well, pretty much everything that's not really, really close to the body has exploded. It seems at this point that we're about to flop on one side and settle down, right? seems like that, but that parachute's still attached. And then, and then this starts to happen. Somebody during the stream suggested I use 
time warp, fizz warp to stop it, but ultimately I just let it go and it kept spinning uh, the way you'll eventually see it spinning for about two minutes. But anyway, that's how Mars star testing has gone. And mainly the frustration is with the parachutes, which have constantly lied to me. They say that they've applied the settings, but uh, before this, before I underfueled it, I was uh, bringing it into Mars atmosphere with a 188 ton load. It's at a 87 ton load right now, so about half that, uh, so, uh, but only 20% of the fuel. And it said the parachutes were all right with 188 tons, but then when I set to 87 tons, they, uh, with the same settings, said that they were not all right. And then I had to change the numbers so that they could be all right, and, you know, make it a little bit more lenient on the speeds I was requiring out of the real shoots. So uh, I, I feel like they've been lying to me, basically. And that's been a problem. And I've, obviously they snap when they're not supposed to snap. So anyway, that's how it's been going. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.